The ISIM project is a multi-sectoral collaborative effort aiming to create a digital twin of an urban environment by generating a virtual scene of buildings, objects, people and information gathered from the real world. The cornerstone of the ISIM approach is an end-to-end -end pipeline that delivers real-time sensing, analytics, 3D visualization and simulation in a single application. My research over the past four months focused on a particular user application of the AR module of the platform. Augmented reality is used to enhance natural environments or situations to offer perceptually enriched experiences. The Microsoft HoloLens is an AR headset that houses depth sensors, processors, cameras, and 3D audio speakers. This head-mounted device can map and store the 3D mesh of an indoor space, localize itself relative to the world around it, and provide spatialized audio. By combining computer vision, augmented reality, and the hardware prowess of a device like the HoloLens, we worked on developing an assistive indoor navigation system for the visually impaired. Visually impaired people face difficulty in performing daily tasks that need visual cognition, such as indoor navigation, particularly in unfamiliar environments. With these numbers and improvements in technology, there is a need for assistive navigation solutions. The identified pain points for visually impaired users were these, wayfinding, distance estimation, unfamiliar spaces, obstacles and hazards on the path. Addressing these issues, the goal for the summer was to build an MVP that supports essential aspects of visual cognition like navigation, obstacle detection, and scene understanding. The development for the HoloLens application was done on Unity 3D Engine with Euphoria and powered by the open source Mixed Reality Toolkit. The scripts are written in C Sharp using Visual Studio. The fundamental modules of the system can be broken down to these two, guided navigation and space understanding. Guided navigation can be broken down into two sub-modules, mapping and wayfinding and voice interaction. The space understanding module splits into three further sub-modules, space awareness, text recognition, and POI recognition. For mapping and wayfinding, we utilized the 3D indoor model for the third floor of the Petrie Science and Engineering building for this demonstration. The navigation data is provided by two sources. The primary source is a 3D model of the floor. This model was imported into Unity and the graph-based A-star pathfinding algorithm was performed to generate a navigation mesh between the points of interest on the floor. This model was then aligned with the real-time field of view of the HoloLens user using fiducial market tracking on the Vuforia engine. This provides a static version of the paths between destinations. The secondary source for the navigation data is the spatial mesh created by the HoloLens as it scans their surroundings. This spatial mapping feature provides a detailed representation of real-world surfaces in the environment around the device. The spatial map accounts for the dynamic features and obstacles of an indoor environment like furniture and temporary restrictions on some paths. The application creates a navigation mesh on this generated spatial map at runtime. The static and dynamic navigation meshes combine their data to navigate the user in that environment. Voice interaction in the app is based on spatial audio. HRTF or head related transfer function is a response that characterizes how an ear receives a sound from a point in space. The HoloLens uses HRTF to generate binaural audio, meaning the user can virtually perceive and locate a sound as though it is coming from a virtual location. The user issues a voice command to navigate to a destination and the assistant uses spatial audio to guide the user along the path. The application evaluates and announces the level of crowding from the amount of people in the user's field of view during navigation. A description of the scene in front of the user can be announced to the user on a single voice command. This is achieved using the computer vision API from Azure. The application captures an image from the real-time view and sends it to the API over an HTTP request, which analyzes the scene and responds with the JSON string. The assistant dictates text from signboards in front of the user with a voice command. The text is recognized using the OCR capabilities of the same API and announced using text-to-speech scripts. The assistant also announces the points of interest within 3 meters of the user with a voice command using spatialized audio. Room A Room A is 40.4 meters away. Start navigation. No people were detected Follow on me. your path. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. The virtual assistant always Follow stays me. a few steps ahead of you and Follow waits for you if Follow you go me. off the path. 
follow me. It leads the way by producing spatial sound and calling follow out me. follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. You have arrived. Read. The text says, York Space Engineering Laboratory 315. Scan scene. The scene might be, a chair sitting in front of a building. Due to strict social distancing measures on campus, I was not able to perform any comprehensive tests with visually impaired or blind subjects. The use of 3D models in this implementation of the system allows for an easier approach to asset creation and helps the application scale across the entire system for the whole campus with several buildings. Using just software, the assistance functionalities can expand and perform better to serve the needs of the visually impaired users. For example, if we perform the object detection and scene analysis using a trained computer vision model that runs on the device, we can tune it to our specific use case and even provide spatial audio for each object around you. This will help the user to create a mental map of the environment using the spatial sound memory. On scaling the system across the integrated platform for the campus, uh, the system can be extended for several use cases such as accessible navigation for the disabled, and emergency navigation of large spaces for first responders. 